When morning came, the ground was white, most appropriate for that day. But little did we think to be on the ground until nearly the month of May. The freeze up started that very night. The next day we had a little thaw, freezing and thawing every second while, gave the finest icicles you ever saw. The roads weren't bad in places and grand where the car had gone. There were a scarce mode of traffic that time. You'd be lucky to see the one. Three weeks passed by with a biting wind, freezing all night and day. The build-up was fierce, but no one thought that a blizzard was on the way. So the night of February the 24th, it had started snowing at 11 o'clock. Next morning, no one expected what he saw, so we all got a mighty shock. It had snowed and drifted all through the night. All the hills appeared so low, because all the hollows and the valleys were filled with drift and snow. It continued right all through that day, a freezing gale from the northeast. It partly filled every barn, not good for bird or beast. Some houses got covered over and the oil lamp was lit all day. No ways of finding the well at all, so melted snow made the tea. When the storm abated, the snow and stopped and the pat making got underway, all round the house to the tough and well, to the calves and the shed of hay. Every animal called for food, the cows, the pigs, the horse neighed, the dog, the cat, the hens cackled and some had even laid. Then all neighbours got together and helped to clear the roads, where the walls were good and high, there were just simply loads. Some men were geared up with hand saws and cut it up in bars, others shifted the chunks with shovels and said, it must have come from theirs. This went on for days and days, it kept them grand and warm. They had a lot of the roads cleared when there came another storm. It wasn't snow this time, of course, but it might as well have been, for it blew some snow back in again and left the ground white and clean. There was no food scarcity that time, for everyone had his own. Carrots, cabbage, potatoes, everything was homegrown. The cows, of course, supplied the milk, and butter came from the cream, and butter milk to make the bread. It all worked within the scheme. So at a time like this to have your own was great for it was impossible to go to town and in lots of houses there was a side of bacon from the rafter hanging down. The hens of course went off their eggs and the ducks then gave a hand and in some houses there was a goose or two. Ah, sure a goose egg it was grand. So let's put back the clock six decades and pretend it was today. Three or four feet of snow all over and drifted every way. Your electricity would be surely gone, so what good was your tank of oil? You might be lucky to have a bit of coal that would do a little while. <laughs> your fridge, of course, would be gone off, and you'd soon use what was there. If you had many mouths to feed, you'd have no grub to spare. You'd soon find out you were out of milk. Now, where is that poly cow? And when you'd go to fill your kettle, you might have no water now. Your light might be a candle and you'd place it on the sill. A big change from all the lights you have, but the room with light would fill. And what about the goggle box? Well, it'd be as silent as a mat. And you might even say in your own mind, well, thank the Lord for that. So the thought of that time should wake us up. We are all unprepared for what came before could come again and no one would be spared. It's hard to believe that at that time there were 20 foot drifts of snow and it all happened on February the 25th, just 60 years ago.